God, I love it when you stop by. It does make my day. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is June 14th. It is Wednesday, which means I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. I do it every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my favorite co-host, Lily Starr, were there for about an hour talking to our viewers live about the stocks they're interested in. If you got a ticker you want us to take a look at, come on in, drop it in the comments. We'll look at it. I'll go over the information. Lily will look at the charts. We'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth to you. But you got to be early. It's first come, first served. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now what we do on On Top and Hot is we look for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. Those are penny stocks and they're on every single market. And when I look for stocks for potential, I go to the charts. I examine the charts and I'm looking for one that has heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go looking for the catalyst. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you. And I got a few of those for you right now. First one we're gonna look at is TPT Global Tech ticker TPTW. Now we looked at this last year sometime around October. She had a nice bounce after we looked at it, then a big fall, and then a giant surge. Then after that, she just came down and she's been dribbling down for quite a while. And right now she is on one of those atypical breakout charts looking good. And she's got lots of news to get her moving. So TPT finished the day at a very low price, 0013 with almost 37% gains. However, she is on the pink limited information tier. This means she's laid on one or more of her financial filings. They've got to get those in soon, or they could be pulled off of the OTC market and put into timeout. They call this the expert market. If they get thrown down to the expert market, their shares cannot be bought or sold until they come back onto the open market. And the only way that happens is for them to get those filings in and get caught up. We will see which ones they're laid on when we take a look at their disclosures. They do have a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. We're always looking for those because there's a lot of important information represented by those green ticks. It's being validated behind the scenes. So we always like to see those. And they've got independent directors. Now the only reason I know you need independent directors is to uplist. Well, they haven't used them yet because there was nowhere to come from to get to the pink. You need them to go from the pink up. So it looks like they have intentions to uplist, but I gotta get this problem solved first, pink limited information. So what does this company do? I think this is a much better description than that last one we had. The company is a technology-based company that provides multimedia and telecommunication products and services, including smart city developments, wireless broadband internet services, view me for social media, VOD and TV streaming content and government contracting. No kidding about that one. TPTW's operations are primarily conducted through its majority owned subsidiaries, which are TPT Speed Connect, TPT Strategic, and Blue Collar Productions, all based in LA, California. Now, their Speed Connect they're really working hard with. TPT Speed Connect is a leading provider of high-speed internet and communication services to residential and business customers. The company serves customers across the states and other countries and is committed to providing exceptional customer service and innovative solutions that meet the evolving need of its customers. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Wow! Huge jump, like uh, six times as much going from 5 million to 31 and a half million. A lot of attention on the company today. Taking a look at that share structure for the company. Not real pretty. Outstanding share count is pretty high at 1.7 billion and quite possibly our float is 1.6 billion. Whatever the float is, I'm going to presume it is over a billion shares, a real high one. Financials for TPT Global. At the end of 2022, she had $7.8 million, which is down from the previous three years where she was doing an average of 10 to 11 million. Quarterly, another low one. The last quarter was 1.6 million when they were doing an average of 2 to 2.2 million per quarter. And we are late, right? Pink Limited. They do not have the March quarter out yet. We need to get that out. Disclosures for TPTW. All right, she has pink limited, so let's see what's going on over here. We've got to come down here 
Let's see what we've got. There is December of 2022. They said they were going to be late on it, and they just filed that on May 16th. Then they said they were going to be late filing marches. That's what the NT10Q stands for, not filing our quarterly report on time. And they are late. It is not in there. That bought them five days. They are way beyond that right now. They need to get that in ASAP. Now let's take a look at that news. We're going to go ahead and scroll all the way back to October, which is when we looked at it the first time. There was a lot of big news back here. The charts were jumping on this news. Now, we're not going to dive into each one of these, but we will look at the top two. We're just going to headline the rest of this so you can see what's going on. These are in October and November. The company completes a $2.9 million road construction project in the state of Kentucky. The company subsidiary was awarded a $2.8 million U.S. Army contract. That piece of news got a 100% jump on the charts. This piece of news, the company signs a strategic investment and partnership agreement with New York real estate investment firm Black Pearl Investments. This must be a hot piece of news because the charts jumped over 550% on that news. Then it barreled down not to recover. But the news kept coming. Another piece that came out in November, the company was awarded its second fire suppression, fire alarm inspection and maintenance service contract for Naval Air Station at Meridian, Mississippi, valued at $3.9 million. Coming into more current news, here in March, the company secures a letter of intent for a $357 million vertical construction loan from Dallas-based banks for the Alabama Smart City Project. $357 million loan this company is taking out for one project, the Alabama Smart City Project. Definitely worth some more due diligence there. Then another piece of news in March, the company was awarded a pavement patching contract with the city of Birmingham, Alabama. And then the two pieces of news that I want to jump into. This one came out April 3rd. TPT Strategic ISTLSC, part of a multiple companies award of $250 million five-year contract for design-build construction services from the Department of Interior and Forest Service. This is how they break it down for us. The company announced that its division, Informative Security and Training, has been awarded a five-year, $250 million contract. Now think about that. They only made $7 million last year. This is for the design build construction services by the Department of Interior and Forest Services. Now the company's responsibilities are construction of facilities, interior and exterior facility renovations, demolition, heating, plumbing, fire intrusion and alarms, asphalt paving, roofing, masonry, in other words, everything. And who are they doing this for exactly and where are they doing this work? Well, the contract's primary area of coverage includes the continental U.S. and Hawaii in any state or U.S. territory where the Department of Interior U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services are, the National Park Service, Bureau of Land Management, Bureau of Reclamation, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and the Forest Services. Yeah, it is a very huge contract covering a very large area for a lot of departments for the government. I think that's hot news. The other piece of news, it's a bit interesting. TPT Global Tech's broadband subsidiary, TPT Speed Connect, closes merger agreement with Pink Sheet Company. Could have used a better headline than that. They tell us here the company has closed an agreement to merge with Asbury 22 Holdings, ticker ASHI, and I haven't done any research into this company. They tell us down here that the company has completed its 4G, 5G network build out and network upgrade and has started its new marketing efforts in the states of Texas, Idaho, and Arizona. The new network deployment is the company's continuing efforts to upgrade its mid-American overall network for rural broadband and position itself for faster market share growth. The combined companies will retain the TPT Speed Connect name and will continue to be headquartered in San Diego, California. Now I have a suspicion here. I haven't read anything. This is just my opinion. 
I got the feeling they did this merger to get that ticker. I get the feeling they're going to be doing a spin out of uh, TPT Speed Connect. That's a feeling. I think they're going to roll that over onto that ticker. They haven't announced anything yet, but that's what I'm thinking. Let's go take a look at that chart now. This is TPTW. This is a six month, four hour chart. And speaking of charts, we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. So on our six month, four hour view, we got a high bubble here of 1.2 cents in November. And we hit a low at the end of March of 0008. Now we looked at it right here in October. On the day she had gotten that news of the army contract. She had a big pop on that day, 100% gains, but she had more gains the following days. Then a huge fall down to our 200 haul. Now we don't talk about this much, but the 200 haul is very much like the 200 day SMA, but it gives more credence to current prices. So you get a line that's a little closer to the price. Then we had a huge run on that news about them getting with Black Pearl and then a huge fall. And right now, the volume is starting to come in. She has come out from underneath all her SMAs on top of her 50, broke the 200 and has pulled back and is sitting there between the two waiting to run. Our PPO has just had a crossover. This is our percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD. You read them the same. MACD has had a crossover and is on top of the signal line, pushing up with green bars accumulated and our RSI just went on fire up there at 71. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So she was under the 200 this entire time, hitting that low, getting back on top of her 200 haul and then shoving herself on top of the 50 and then on top of the 200 and she just kept pushing, hitting a high here of 0014 and pulling back to 0013. You can see today the volume was strong and all of our oscillators on the one hour chart are perfect. Every single one of them is pushing up. You can't lose if every oscillator is pushing up. Five day, five minute. So she was riding the 50 day SMA until today. Today is when everything changed, folks. She got up on top of her nine day SMA, almost touched her 20 day for a bounce, went back to her nine day. She's bouncing on herself. You see this? She's bouncing on herself, the nine day SMA. She is not actually touching the 20. That is a very light price. Now what scares me here is I see our 200 day SMA has just come into the picture. In a lot of cases, what I see when this happens is the price will gravitate to that strongest SMA. Whether it be above or below, the price normally goes to it. Doesn't necessarily stay there, but it goes to it. And that hasn't happened yet. So I'm a little concerned, but that just came into the picture today. So I'd be watching for that tomorrow. Oscillators right now are a bit cool, but they're still holding up high. I like TPTW. She's got these huge contracts. She's doing lots of deals with the government and they're just going to keep using her if they're happy. I like this company, TPTW, but do some more research. There was a lot of news we did not dive into. Now, this is an interesting company to say the least. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is Atomus One, ticker J-E-W-L, Jewel, which is an appropriate ticker for the company considering what they do. They grow diamonds. <laughs> you heard me right. They grow diamonds. I don't know exactly how they do it, but we'll get more information about it when we look at their news. Now the chart, it's an atypical breakout chart, but she's breaking out right now. But the volume's real light. And I think when the volume comes in, we're going to see a much stronger surge here. So Jewel finished the day at $1.18 with just about 5.5% gains. So what was the relative volume today? Well, as I said, it was light. It did increase a little bit from 163,000 to 195,000. Share structure for the company is good. We've got a low outstanding share count of 23 million. Now, I don't know what the float is, but I do know it's under 23 million, and I am happy with that. Financials for Adamus. Well, last year was the first year she has made any income. She did $1.7 million at the end of 2022. 
She's got all of her quarterly financials in, including marches, where she did $113,000. And that is considerably down from the previous quarters. Disclosures for the company. Now, I did jump through these. These two 8Ks correlate to news. And then you've got their most recent financial here. If you're really interested in the company, forget about doing your research on Google or going through every news press. Just jump on into the most recent financial. This has everything about the company from A to Z. It is the easiest way to get the most research done. So let's take a look at that news now. So we've got three pieces of news here that I want to look at and we're going to dive into each one of these real brief and quick. This one came out March 28th. As reactors reach their full production capacity, Atomus One anticipates more than $12 million in annual revenue from current factory. Now, they only did $1.7 million last year. They tell us here that the company is the original lab-grown diamond company, a high-tech company that leverages proprietary technology to produce high-quality, single-crystal, lab-grown diamonds for jewelry and diamond materials for industrial uses. Today, they provide a business update for their investors. The company now has 12 full-capacity reactors that are growing diamonds at a rate of approximately 3,000 rough carats of diamonds a month. Based on the rate of production, Atomus One Management believes that it will begin to receive additional revenue by mid-summer 2023. We're there right now. With reactors at their full production capacity and full marketing underway, the company anticipates more than $12 million in annual sales revenues from the current factory in Greenville, South Carolina. Next piece of news comes out on May 31st. Atomus to incorporate AI-driven solutions to optimize manufacturing, marketing, branding, communications related to its development of lab-grown diamonds. Well, of course they are. Everybody's using AI to make things better. The company announced today the acquisition of a 9.99 equity stake in NextGen AI Solutions Group. Atomus will receive access to NextGen AI's AI-driven solutions, which will help the company streamline a number of its manufacturing, marketing, branding, and communications processes. Atomus expects the partnership to help improve manufacturing output volume, create and manufacture new designs in its high-end Ellie Jolie line, which is the next piece of news. Atomus One completes designs of its Ellie Jolie luxury jewelry line ahead of its anticipated September launch. The company today announced the completion of its initial designs for the company's Ellie Jolie high-end luxury jewelry line. We have been diligently preparing to launch our Ellie Jolie line of luxury lab-grown diamond jewelry, which will strongly be able to compete in a market dominated by high-end retailers using mined stones. And there is more information to look at, but that's what they're doing, folks. They've got their, their capacitors at full swing right now. They expect $12 million, and that revenue is to start now, mid-summer 2023, and the charts are set up. Let's go take a look at those. We are looking at the full chart for JEWL, Atomus One. Looks like she came on the market December 9th, hit a high of $11.94 that day, and then fell and fell hard. The bottom fell out from underneath her. She hit a low here in March of 69 cents. Now you can see we have an atypical breakout chart here. 200 day SMA sloping down, leveling off. Right here, we had our first jump telling me I want to climb, but this is still too steep for me to get up there. So it came back down from where it started, right? It did not lose any strength on that, came right back down. And then five days ago, she took off, boink, jumped on top of her nine day SMA and has been climbing. Volume is light, but she is pushing up nonetheless. Our PPO, MACD are pushing up and our RSI is clear up at 67 right now. 20 day one hour view our low bubble was under the 200 we had a jump here pre-market what a jump she went from 90 cents to a dollar 36 and then when the market opened up she started falling the whole day 
I know everybody hated this stock that day. She did get back on top of the 200 at the very end of the day, and she's been laying up there for quite a few days until she took off again, jumping onto that nine-day escalator and pushing up. When she did decide to fall, she fell to her 20 not the 50. She bounced off of that and she's riding again with a little bit of pullback after market, but she seems to bounce back from these pullbacks pretty easily. Everything looks SOP, standing operating procedure. Our oscillators, they do show a little bit of pullback for that aftermarket, but outside of that, they are hot. Looking at our five day, five minute, that's a brilliant chart. Low bubble in this corner, 82 cents. High bubble in that corner, dollar 30. She pulled back and fell to a dollar 18. She's above her 200 the entire time, bounced off it right there, and she is sitting near her 50-day SMA. The oscillators are cool right now. I will give you that on the five minute, but I like this. She's got a program going on that she is marketing these lab growing diamonds and they expect to start making money this summer and they are projecting 12 million dollars so now would be a good time to consider it the chart looks good let that volume come in and we could see a strong run we got a penny stock here from the otc and we've looked at this back in april now this is kind of weird this company also has a product that they grow in the labs this is cult food science ticker c-u-l-t-f they grow meat yes meat like beef pork fish they actually grow this meat they harvest cells and they grow it with the proprietary patented technology and the meat grows and grows and grows and they cut off what they need as it continues to grow and believe it or not the meat is exactly like any of the other meat we eat there is no difference whatsoever but they've got other products as well we'll take a look at that in a minute now the chart it has been above the 200 we looked at it in april Right after we looked at it, she had a couple of 100% pops. And now she's come back down to the 200 and it looks like she's going to bounce and she's ready to run again. Caught food finished the day at 0 .064 with about 12.5% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We call this the better tier. It's better than the banks because they have to audit their financials. They literally get a CPA to do the accounting. So we get fundamentals. Those are numbers that are actual and factual that we can trust. That makes them more transparent. They've got all the green ticks we're looking for down here. Verified profile, transfer agent verified, and a bonus. Penny stock exempt. I like this. This takes the risk out of the stock. Why? Penny stock exempt means that they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars of assets during that entire period, and they've kept up with their financials. They've proven themselves to be reliable, responsible, so they remove the risk. So I like seeing that. So I've already told you what this company does. Let me show you a little more. Jumping over to their website, these are some of their products that are non-meat. They have their pet products, which they are blazing on right now. Most of the news we're going to look at is all about their new pet products. New cheese. They also have a zero coffee drink. We'll get more into that in a second here. And they also have these gummy candies. Now, why would they have these here? Well, you do know that gummy candies are made with horse hoofs. That's how they make them gummy. Now they found a way to make them gummy with no hoofs being in our candy. Now the company's got a lot of subsidiaries and all of them do the same thing. They're all working, growing something in the lab. They've got, they say 18 companies, but I'll bet you it's more than that because they've been on a spree buying more companies. These companies each have their own thing. Cultured proteins, cultured meat, cultured coffee. That means they are making coffee beans without having to grow it. And the coffee is exactly like any other coffee. Cultured meat, cultured seafood, dairy products. Down here, they are making honey without the bees. They are growing honey. It's just unbelievable. Chocolate. We don't have to grow cocoa anymore. Yay! We can make our own chocolate. So they got lots of companies here all doing the same thing they do. So what was the relative volume around the company today? 
though, just a little bit of growth, not much at all, going from 116,000 to 129,000. Share structure for cult food. Outstanding shares, 201 million, pretty normal. And looks like our float is probably going to be about 180 million, but I don't know. I'm just guessing what the numbers they give us here. Financials for cult food. We have nothing yearly and we have nothing quarterly. So they're not making any money yet. We need this company to start making money. Disclosures for cult foods. We have nothing. No filings here whatsoever, but they are all caught up on their financials. Take a look at their news. They've got lots of news here. I've gone all the way back to November here because I wanted you to see this. Cult Food Science commends the FDA for approval of first cultivated meat product in the United States. I do believe that one was chicken. So don't be thinking this stuff is so weird that it'll never get approved. The Food and Drug Administration are approving these cultured meats. That's the nice term for them, cultured meats. Now I'm zooming all the way up here to March, and we don't need to go into any of these news presses. The headlines give you all the information you really do need. But of course, if you want to know more, dive into any one of these. This one says that Cult Food Science announces binding letter of intent to acquire because animals, consumer brands, and formulations. In April, the company announces a memorandum of understanding for supply of cultivated red snapper for pet food brands. And I'll bet you that red snapper is being cultured. It is being grown. And I don't mean grow a fish. I mean grow fish meat. Then they say here in uh, April as well, Cult Food Science announced another MOU with Gelatech to create collagen enhanced pet foods. Hmm, and now it's all about pet foods from here on out, folks. Cult Food Science announces Nucci's brand launch and commercialization outlook. Here in May, the company announces investment and joint venture plans with culinary medicine company Pekish. This company is doing all sorts of things working with medical foods, and they're going to be using this company's technology to do that. Then we have uh, the company begins shipping samples of Nucci's. They announce sprinkles, a pet performance supplement, and another memorandum of understanding for distribution agreement in Singapore for Nucci's pet foods. Matter of fact, I do want to dive into that one. They tell us here that Nucci's brand pet foods, treats, and supplements will be distributed by Polygen Asia in Singapore starting in Q4 2023. The company, a pioneer in the investment, development, and commercialization of cellular agricultural technologies and products, is pleased to announce it has signed a memorandum of understanding for a distribution agreement with Polygen Asia PTE to provide Nucci's brand pet foods to its more than 50 retailers in Singapore starting Q3, Q4 of 2023 with select products and will expand in the following quarters. And that's what you got going on. Lots of companies they're acquiring. Lots of distribution deals they are setting up abroad, not just in America, around the world. So those revenues should be coming in anytime soon. And the chart looks like it's ready to break out now. We are now looking at Cult Food Science, ticker C-U-L-T-F. That's a six month, four hour view. Our low bubble is 1.3 cents back in November of last year. Our high bubble is in April of this year, just a little over 13 cents. And that is an uptrend from bubble to bubble. Started off slow and then got fast and then ripped. And then fell very hard back to the 50 day SMA. Now it was right here. We looked at her. She had had this huge rip of over 100% and then fell hard. Now, I can't remember why we looked at it exactly, but I had faith in her, obviously, or we wouldn't have looked at her. Well, the very next day, she had another 100% rip, and then she fell again, and then two days later, another 100 plus percent rip. Then she came down to that 50-day SMA and calmed down. She dribbled a little bit here, but she didn't fall far. It was actually the 200-day SMA coming up. And now it has met the price. 
We had one strong bounce here showing us it wants to get through the 50. Right there, the 50 is close enough. She's jumped up on top of the 50, and I think she's going to take off. Our oscillators say recovery is happening right now. Our PPO has got a crossover imminent. Once that blue line gets on top of the pink, we got more power. MACD has had a very strong bounce coming up to the signal line with green bars getting bigger, and our RSI is climbing from 45 to 55. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot happening here. I mean, you know, if I put my line here, you can see going straight across, we're pretty much just going sideways the hard way. We're hitting a high, we're hitting a low, but we're just coming right back to where we were. Right up underneath the 200, right up underneath the 200. On top of the 50, floating on the 9. This is looking sweet. Oscillators are getting stronger now. We've got our crossover on our PPO, and we're already over the signal line, and all of our bars are big and green. And our RSI is up to 59 now. Five day, five minute. Well, she was going sideways with a few jumps and dips. She hit a high today of seven cents, fell back very, very fast, then started climbing on that nine day SMA, and she finished the day at 0 .064, just under her high bubble. She is looking good. All of our oscillators are strong. All of them are pushing up, and our RSI is at 60 right now. I see something could happen here. Now, what we really need, folks, are some revenues. I've been waiting for revenues for, from this company. However, warm charts give us gains without revenues, without big catalysts. So I would keep my eye on Colt F. It can't hurt to put it on your watch list. If you're still here, I've got some extras for you. More hot charts. I see a lot of hot charts when I'm doing my research through the day, looking for stocks to talk to you about. And after I've accumulated enough, I still look at charts. And I find a lot of them that I've done no research on, but I think are worthy of considering. Obviously, you can do some research. I'm not saying invest in a hot chart without due diligence. But a hot chart is where you start. You see a chart you like? Go see if you can find a catalyst. It may be one you want to play. So let's get this ball rolling. First one we're looking at is ILAL. She's at 15 cents. You can see it is an atypical breakout chart, and she's in the midst of her breakout right now. The 50-day is just about ready to turn around, and we'll get our golden cross out of that, which a lot of people have on their scans. Volume isn't anything extra to talk about right now, but our oscillators are all going up in a nice ramp. This is looking good. Next one I think is a hot one is KAVL. She's at 67 cents right now. She did have a big strong push today, but look at the volume as well. That was also a very strong push compared to the days before. Something's happening. And all of our oscillators just took a quick turn to the upturn. So this one you may want to keep an eye on. Next one is Nighthawk, ticker NHWK at 77 cents. She had a huge rip today, all the way up here to $1.50, 100%, but she's come all the way back down, and she is nearer 200, and there was a lot of volume in the picture today. And all the oscillators are on the high side, worthy of your consideration. This is VRAX, ticker VRAX. Currently at 48 cents, she was an atypical chart. You can see she's actually rolling down and now starting to roll up. But we have a perfect puncture going on right there. She is going through right now, and the volume is just starting to come into the picture. And all of our oscillators, again, took a strong, quick turn to the uprise. Another one for you is RAP. This is a company that's got this uh, anti-violent device you can use to shoot a string that ties people up while they're running away so that they can stop running. This had a huge fall here. She is getting ready to try a breakout. The volume is what caught my attention here. It's getting thick. She is pushing up very strong right now and all of our oscillators have had a turnaround. This one could be interesting. Next one is we. This is a pure atypical breakout pre-breakout chart. We're way down here, but she's gotten up over top of that 50, and this is starting to plane off, and all of this volume is very strong. 
This could be breaking out. Looking at our oscillators, they're all starting to point up. And on our four hour, we are already in the red on the overbought. Three more for you. GSTC. This is Globe Star Therapeutics at 005. She is breaking out right now. The 50 is way down here. So after she breaks out, I would expect her to come back down to that 50. So take your gains as quick as you can. See all that volume coming into the picture right now. And all of our osculators are just now starting to bring in that strength. AWLIF, this is Amorest Lithium. 27 cents currently. Look at that volume increase, folks. I couldn't pass this one up. We had an atypical chart here. She tried to break out at a perfect point right there at the very, very bottom, but she didn't do anything but come back under, and that looked kind of sad. But once the 200 starts to turn up, all of a sudden here, volume came in. Now, there may be a catalyst. I do not know. I've done no research, but look at that volume. There's a reason it's strong, and all of our osculators are pushing up to the moon. Last one for you people is ILPT, Industrial Logistics. She has a crazy atypical breakout chart. She tried to break out here when it got level. She should have had some success, but she didn't. She fell back down here, hitting this low. She is now trying it again. It looks a little bit early, but the volume says people want this to rise. And all of the oscillators are very, very strong. There you go. Nine hot charts that are well, worthy of some DD. Wow, folks. You know, in the last three days, we've had 35 hot chart stocks to consider. Now, we're only talking about three, but we are finding hot charts. That first day, six out of nine rows. And to be honest, I have not checked the other ones yet, so I don't know what's going on with them. But the fact of the matter is, they are being presented to you. You are getting 12 hot charts that you can look at, and three of them I've already done the DD on. Come on, fair is fair. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.